G'day, I'm Dr. Kev, and as an engineer, I'd like to talk to you about an affliction that really affects many of our projects, CAD vision. And like many other engineers, I too suffer from CAD vision. When I model something on my medium-sized screen, things appear bigger or smaller than they are in real life. And while this isn't a curable condition, we can at least alleviate some of the symptoms by doing full-size mock-ups. For Project 171, but I didn't want CAD vision to be something that we would suffer through. So I bought a bunky old engine and decided to strip it and make it less oily and disgusting to work on so I could use it for full-size mock-ups. Welcome to Car Design Workshop. Well, if you've watched some of the previous videos, you'll have already seen this engine. This is something that Harley and I have torn apart over a series of videos. We've torn the engine down, and then in a later video, we tore the head down. And during that process, we got all of the weights of the components. This is helps a, a little bit further down the line when we want to start looking at center of gravity calculations and and really just understanding the engine in general. And being engineers and lacking the knowledge and fortitude of skilled tradesmen, we also wanted to keep our hands clean. So a big part of tearing down that engine was to also make it a little bit cleaner to work on so that every time we wanted to move things around for the mock-up, we weren't dealing with oil and grease every single time. As we noted in previous videos, the seller of the engine, this was a $120, I think, $120 Australian, which is equivalent to, I don't know, $5 US plus tariffs. Um, they had said this engine was in a running condition and it clearly wasn't. When we tore it down, it, the, the bearings were horrible. It was just full of gunk. There's a lot of corrosion, but that was okay. We're really using this engine just for the shell. And while it was covered in dirt and leaves and spider webs, it was also pretty inconvenient to move around. So the base engine, if we stripped away the intake and some of the components that were easy to remove, there's about 100 kilos. And that's more than I've ever really been able to move around comfortably. Uh, so you're ending up having to use an engine crane anytime you're wanting to position this. So I really just wanted to see how much weight we could strip out if we took out all of the internals. Now, as we're tearing this down, one of the bonuses is we get to really learn how the engine's put together and identify some of the issues we may need to work with in the future. Now, I already had a scan of this engine. I'd purchased this from uh, Bremer Automotion from Victoria. They had a pretty good model there. I know that we had the capability to scan at work, but it does take a fair bit of time to put a model together. And I was quite happy to pay what was a reasonable uh, sum of money to ha have a model I could put into CAD. And I've been using that for the CAD models, but also, to print out for scale models. Now scale models are, are useful to start that visualization, improve that visualization, but you really don't get an idea of how everything's going to run together. If you are doing this sort of work and you're interested in seeing what Bremer have, I'd highly recommend it. I'm, I'm not getting anything from them in this video, but I think they provide some really good models. Uh, they've got a pretty good online store and I think the prices are reasonable. Anyone that's done this 3D scanning before, know that you're going to save a heap of time by getting this sort of stuff off the shelf. I wasn't really that interested in tearing the engine down to model it. I was quite happy with what I got from uh, Bremer, but I did want to learn a little bit about how everything worked and went together in an EJ. Now with the weights, we could go through the process of identifying a really accurate center of gravity. Probably not that much point with a flat motor like this. The center of the crank shaft is probably where the center of gravity is going to be, plus or minus, not a lot. Uh, but it's a worthwhile process. I enjoyed the process. It was great pulling it apart. And I've got a pretty good idea now of um, what improvements could be made to the engine, um, as well as starting to see, I guess, the, the things we might need to access for maintenance a, a little bit more clearly. Now to get this looking a lot better, I started first with a degrease. Now these motors is absolutely caked. There was quite a lot of oil leaks. So as we started to pull it apart, we noticed a lot of gaskets had failed. Uh, it, was, it was really quite messy. The first degreasing pass made it so that it was reasonable to work on, but it was still pretty messy. 
But one advantage we had is that the engine was never going to go back together. It was not an engine we're going to rebuild. Uh, we want to keep it as a mock-up engine throughout the life of the project. Uh, so I didn't really need to worry about protecting any of the surfaces or getting worried about getting sand into crevices. So I just, once we degreased it, we took it, gave every component a, a good sandblast. Uh, cleared off all of the gunk and we can see a really good comparison between something that's been uh, degreased and then something that's had uh, the sandblasting process done to it. I actually quite love the sandblasting process. I, I like taking something that's pretty messy, taking it back to bare metal. It's almost like the Mary Kondo of engine work. It's just removing the things that don't bring you joy and there's no joy about dirt and grease all over the motor. Once it was sandblasted, I just wanted it to look as good as it could look. We're going to have this in and around the project for quite a while. I can get pretty particular about these sorts of things. So just um, put a coat of an aluminium looking paint from VHT. Uh, just something I had around from when I'd been working on some motorcycle blocks a little bit earlier. And I had a bit of um, a gold colored thing that I thought I'd put the rocket covers as well. I highly took away the plastics, gave them a really good... Uh, tidy up as well so we ended up with something that looks like a a, a bit of a built engine or a really nice looking engine that's going to be a little bit closer to what we're trying to achieve in the final car i want to make sure that when you're looking into an engine bay of a car that everything actually looks really well finished definitely don't want to go to the point where it's all show and no go but a little bit of show a little bit of go is a really nice happy medium there now to match with the engine in the full-size mock-up, I also had a gearbox. I managed to pick up one that a friend had been using in a buggy. So it was a four-wheel drive uh, gearbox from a Subaru that has been converted to a two-wheel drive. Uh, now it is actually using some of the equipment from Bremer. So Bremer provide a conversion kit for those gearboxes, a really handy product. I haven't gone in, I haven't bothered having a look inside the gearbox yet. It does need a little bit of a tidy up. Now I'm not going to use this gearbox in the in the final car. I'm going to use it as a mock-up. I'm probably not going to go to the effort of stripping it though. It's while it's still reasonably heavy, it can be moved around uh, reasonably straightforward. And I've just made at this stage just a little wooden trolley using scraps at the expected ride height of this, so I can roll it around the workshop and move it up to uh, any mock-up that I'm creating. And Harley and I have started making the mock-up for the chassis. So we've got a really rough idea of what the composite chassis or the proposed monocoque chassis at the front would look like. Now we're going to cover the chassis in other videos, so I won't bother talking about that too much uh, now. But already the advantages of a full-size monocoque are clear. We've found a number of areas where um, accessibility to the engine is going to be important. Some of the dimensions in the model, um, while they look fine in the scan, are probably not going to give us a clearance we need. Uh, certainly in the cockpit, there's a few dimensions that are going to have to change. And that's exactly why I want to have a mock-up. If we do go down the road, especially go down the road of a composite tub, you end up investing quite a lot of cost into materials that is really, really hard to justify if all the dimensions are wrong. So you could, it's very easy to make a car that, where the ergonomics are horrible, it's very difficult to work on. So I'm a big fan of doing mock-ups in projects. So I guess the question would be, what did we actually get the weight down to once we stripped all the components out and how easy is it to move around? Well, we managed to halve the weight of the engine. So the base engine, instead of being... 100 kilos is now 50 kilos. Now that's not comfortable for one person to move around. It's quite easy when we've got a couple of people in the workshop, we can move it around without any real trouble whatsoever. But I can move it now without a, an engine crane. And that's exactly what I was hoping to get from uh, this project. Now I'm taking my time with the design process of this car. This is a project I wanted to do for a long time and I enjoy the process. This is not going to be a fast process. And doing the mock-ups, while they help inform the process, are all also incredibly motivating. It's really nice at this stage to be able to sit in a chassis and see the engine at close to the size it's going to be with the final car. It starts to give a sense that the project is moving 
even if most of the work is done sitting in front of a computer doing iteration after iteration after iteration. I have the same thing when in my job, I, part of my job is to be a faculty advisor for a Formula student team, a Formula SAE team. And the mock-up process really helps. I mean, it really builds some ownership of the project or some connection to the project that's not there while it's just pictures on a screen. So I'm keen to see in the comments whether you think that actually going through this and taking an engine and stripping it down and cleaning it up and doing a mock-up, whether you think that's a complete waste of time and whether in your own projects you just either use the real engine or you just stay in CAD until you're much further along or, or whether you do uh, enjoy building some mock-ups and you know making pretend engine noises while you're turning your steering wheel sitting in the chassis which um, I, I certainly wouldn't do anything as childish as, as that at least there's no video uh, evidence of that uh, so please make sure to leave a comment as you're liking and subscribing to this video and i really hope that you've enjoyed these few videos where we've taken that uh, pretty beat up engine and turned it into something useful from a design sense thanks for your time